Ooh, can I put... I don't know how to use lice with that. I think okay. he'd notice. Okay, how can we get it so he doesn't notice? Well, let's talk to some pirates, actually, first. No, wait, we have jar combs here. There's a jawbreaker. Pick that up. Ooh, he puts his comb down once in a while. Can I put this on the comb? Holy infestation! You've been struck with the hair demons! What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin! The scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas! <laughs> That's a lie! Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions! Good analogy. This calls for drastic action. I'm bringing in old iron sides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No, no, you'll ruin my hair! Ah, there we go. Well, let's first take a look around before sitting down. Let's talk to the salty pirate. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. So? So, it's good to meet you, Mr. Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name, Bill? Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? Okay. Are you ever going go to go back to pirating? Back to pirating? Maybe, someday, if I find the right captain. Perfect! I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You, a captain? Hardly. Okay. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure? Immense mounds of gold and diamonds, solid gold scepters of power, anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden? Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. Okay, I bet you I could find gold on this very island. I bet I could find gold on this very island. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. Okay. Um, are you sure you don't want to join the crew? Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? You still haven't proven you can find anything of value. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. Okay. Um, how did you break into the hairstyling industry? How did you industry? break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Just that, you know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just a lot of fun. It's like a party every day. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy and the laughter <laughs> bubbles out of me like a sparkling fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. <laughs> uh, pirate stories, pirate got stories. any? Got any? Okay, here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. He had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Hmm. Uh, don't you mean Sixth Sense? Don't you mean Sixth Sense? No. By some cruel trick of nature, he was born without taste buds. But his other senses took over and gave him an uncanny ability to find treasure. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles, until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. After we tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. I just noticed there is a scissor on the ceiling right here. I wonder if we could grab that. Did you ever find, Did you any, ever treasure? find any treasure? 
We sailed for two years, and had finally started back to Plunder Island. But just as we started to doubt him, he made off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. Wait a second. Was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? <laughs> I just had a feeling. <laughs> okay, I it's think that's a enough. Pleasure. Bye. Okay, what about this guy here? The Dapper Pirate. It's a Dapper Pirate. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. Of course you are. Okay then, who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the... That's right, mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Edward Snugglecakes Van Helgen. <laughs> Dude! Okay, uh, how would you how like, you like to, to join, join my, my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's going to be a blast. We're going to Blood Island. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. Yeah, gentlemen, that's me gentlemen, all over. That's me all over. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. All right, let's get to dueling. No, no, no. There are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Mm, okay. Hmm. And that's a nice shirt, nice clone you're wearing. Did I mention you're a big old bed wedding duty head? How appropriate. You fight like a cow. How I appropriate. Like you fight like a cow. That's an old one. Come back when you have some fresher material, eh? Okay. Let's try this one. Did I mention you're a big old bedwetting duty head? No, but I'm still not impressed. Nice cologne you're wearing. Did you actually roll around in dung or just dab a little behind each ear? That's not the type of insult I had in mind. Okay. Hey, that's a nice shirt. How long have you been colorblind? Oh, please. I don't want to insult you. Why can't we just get along? Okay, um... You went from pirating to hairstyling. Why? The music of the sea is something that takes hold of your soul and never lets go. Let's go. But the life of a sailor is a rough one. And the sea shows no mercy. It was no easy choice to leave. But I realized that I could still enjoy the music of the sea while remaining safely on land. Okay, um... By hanging out at the docks and singing to passing sailors? No, believe me, that doesn't work. By starting a barbershop quartet, obviously. Obviously, okay, so he's the one that there started. are only three of you. Auditions didn't go as well as we'd hoped. We once had a tenor named Dominique, but he left. Artistic differences. Mm. Okay, um... You still haven't explained why you chose hairstyling. You still haven't explained why you chose hairstyling. Well, we spent so much time coming up with a clever name for the shop, we realized we were going to have to give up singing and actually become barbers. But I still like to think that we're not just cutting hair. That maybe, just maybe, we're teaching people a little bit about themselves. Okay. Um, sure, let's talk about pirate stories. I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on, I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Um... You were being haunted by a spiteful ghost of the former were captain. You were haunted by the spiteful ghost of a former captain. No, a restless spirit would have been a welcome relief compared to the evil we faced. We were all stricken with a melody, a diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 la. Hey, that's kind of catchy. Aye. All too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left, 
the doomed voyage of the obsessivo compulsivo. Haunt me. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's pretty close. Cool. Look at the time. Gotta scoot. Let's see if we can use anything with them. I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing to say. All right. Uh, examine jar of combs. It's a bunch of combs floating in that blue stuff. Can I take one? Hands off those combs. Those are ours. Okay, guess not. Uh, there's a paperweight here. Let's see if we can grab that. Keep your hands off my paperweight. What about the scissor in the scene? Can I grab this? I can't Somehow. reach them. Um, how can we reach them? I don't know, actually. What is this? Drawbreakers. Can we give this to someone? My pirate instincts tell me I should keep this to myself. No, thank you. It would ruin my dinner. Okay. That doesn't need a jawbreaker. That doesn't need a jaw. That doesn't need a jawbreaker. Okay, can I take Walk a look at this? For the discerning pirate. Spring edition. I'll wait for the movie. It's a rock, and it's a paperweight. Nah. Okay, and lastly we got the... Can we... Oh, what handle is this? There's a handle there, so let's examine it's the chair first. It's an adjustable barber's chair. I sure could use a haircut. Have a seat, laddie, and I'll do you up with a fine coif. Is that how you say it? I always said coif. Can I pull his handle while he's doing this? Apparently so. Oh, hey, look, we got it. Ugh, blast that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. Okay, so let's see if we go any higher. Keep going. Keep going. A little more. Aha! Now we can grab the scissor. Alright. And let's go back down. Phew. Well, I searched the whole island and I couldn't have found a single rock for a paperweight. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid, too. Okay, uh, what else is there here? I went to the book. Can we grab the book? I'll wait for the movie. Okay, let's talk to the he barber looks here. looks like a true professional. Mm, no. Oops, not Ahoy grabbing. there, I'm okay. Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. Um, how did you become a barber pirate? How did you pirate? become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema, the fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. So how did that help you become a barber pirate? It was a clip of ship. Ah. Okay. Um, so you started this salon? So you started this salon. Aye, but not on the own. I grew to love hairstyling so much that I told two of my best friends about it. And then they told two friends. Aye, and they told two friends, and so on and so on. Okay. Um, I want to know more about safe hair replacement systems. I want to know more systems. about safe hair replacement systems. Ah, there's no such thing. It's no proper to fool with the course of nature. Okay, and pirate Can stories. Rousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. We were a crew of two score men under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard the tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. We set sail and landed on the island within a fortnight and found the treasure the next morning. Okay, um, how big is a treasure are how we talking about here? How big a treasure are we talking about here? Immense. An inconceivable amount of gold, silver, jewels, and coupons for discounts at area restaurants. Oh, it was a beautiful sight. A tremendous chest made of solid gold. 
Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. He gathered his resolve, counted to three, filled his lungs and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought a grimace to even the most steel-hearted crewman. By nightfall, the lot of us were lying on the beach, writhing in pain. Ow. <laughs> um, why did you use a system of why ropes you and pulleys? a system of ropes and pulleys? That would have been the weak man's way out. The pirate Angus McFulcrum had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. The weakling used a lever and took the chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. And my proud Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cursing himself for not being strong enough. Haggis, that's an unusual Haggis. name. That's an unusual name. I suppose it is. But Haggis is just a nickname. The given name is heart, liver, and kidneys boiled in the stomach of the animal McMutton. Oh, so your parents were expecting a girl. Yay. <laughs> What is the blue stuff in the jar anyway? What is that blue stuff in the jar anyway? Ah, the old comb juice. It is a fiery brew that's bested many a sailor with her fermented froth. It'll burn your throat unless you chase it with conditioner. Okay. And how would you like to join my crew? How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush. But a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? by besting me in a time-honored test of strength. Okay. Um, Australian rules football, 500 meter bucket full of heavy rocks relay, helping you move. Let's go with that helping one. Helping you move? Oh, could you? I just have a bed and a few boxes of books. I, I was just kidding. Was that really the test of strength? No. I'm talking about the traditional Highland display of strength and virility, the caber toss. Okay, what in the world is a caper? A caber. What in the world is a caber? The caber is a large tree trunk. Oh. We go to the field of competition, and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. That's just about the stupidest sport I've ever heard of. And I watch cable television. Uh, but they kind of argue with tradition. Okay. Uh, sound great. Let's do this. Sounds great. Let's do it. Oh, so that's what this is for. I would never follow such a weak captain. Okay, that didn't go so well. Um. Hmm. So, how can we... What can we do? Help that. No. That painting leaves me cold. I don't want that. That's the ugliest painting in the shop. Can I take any of these? I don't want that horrible painting. Why would I want something that ugly? I'm afraid that if I touch that painting, I would be infected by the ugliness of it. There's a plaque on this portrait. It says, Captain Richard Squawkins. There never was a more despicable knave, but we gave him an impeccable body wave. <laughs> it's too high to reach and too ugly to want. Captain Charles Vane. The captain stood seven feet high in his boots, but you'd never have guessed that we dyed his roots. Okay, I don't think we can take any of these. It. That painting is unutterably hideous. Another satisfied customer. Okay. I would rather die than on that painting. In loving memory, crackers, 1684 to 1685. I should Rest in that. peace, crackers. It's the only art in here that's any good. Jack Rackaham, always a dapper crook. Jack wore the layered look. Okay, uh, who is this one here? Captain Steed Grummet. He fought and he struggled, 
He kicked and he brawled. But when he left our shop, we made sure he was bald. <laughs> Thomas Lude. Here was a dangerous man when accosted, but he looked pretty good when his hair had been frosted. Rachel Squall. This lady, we're certain, was no debutante. She killed 20 men while she wore this buffant. Very impressive. Edward Screech. When it came to rum, Edward Screech never skimped. He drank a whole bottle while he had his hair crimped. Okay. So I wonder if there's any way we could actually get the jar of combs. But let's try the ventriloquism book on him. Yeah, I don't think he'd like that. Okay. Um, we got rock, paper, and scissors here. What else do we have here? Handle, barber chair, a book, portraits. Anything else? 